Well, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Another great day. God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good, right? Amen. And Char's not here. We, we, we got the, a lot of people that are out sick. I know last week was a bunch, and yeah. there's out, some out sick, and some, they, they're feeling better, but just staying away. And so that's the smart thing to do. Just just keep your distance if you're feeling down. Amen. 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 And we will pray for you from afar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind that. And the Bible says lay hands on the sick. I do that. You know, I absolutely do that. But uh, but this is a good day. Shark's not here to remind us. But what is today? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Hey, you guys got it together. Praise the Lord. God is good. So uh, let's have a, a word of prayer. Rocky, you want to pray? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for a beautiful day. Keep us safe going into the holiday. Uh, be with us in our travels. And this morning, as we worship you, please send your Holy Spirit down so that we may understand your words better and give you our, our, our best in praising you. Uh, keep an eye on Sheila and let wife get rested up. We do depend on him. He's a good young man. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. All right, so, so this first song is not up there. But the, you all just said the words. So it's it's pretty simple. Anybody who wants to stand up, you feel free to stand up. If you, you worship God however you feel led to worship God. Don't let nobody hold you back when you do that. But this is the day the Lord has made, okay? Well, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day. Yeah. 
Det er ikke rigtig tid, det der. Hvad er lige for en dag? I'm trying not to look at the empty chair. This is pretty hard. But, now scripture says we shouldn't mourn as those that have no hope. But boy, that's hard. That's really hard. I know, uh, tell you what I do know. What I, what I do know is after Bible study one day, Mel hung around and prayed the sweetest prayer. And what I do know, and I don't know, and he said he was going to go home and, and cry some more, and, and boy, there was tears. The only time I ever saw him cry. But I didn't know that I saw a change in him. I know that I saw a hunger for God's word. And uh, what well, he dug in. And every single day, something. He had a question about something. He read this, and what about this, and what about this? And what about this? Well, I, I knew he was digging in his, in his word. And uh, gives me great hope. One day I'm going to be before the throne, worshiping my king. And he's going to be right there beside me. Take me some time. You look like a, a father and a best friend and a crazy, funny uncle all rolled up in one, you know. It wasn't perfect, no, he wasn't perfect, and he will tell you that for sure. But I witnessed God working on him. And he tell you the same thing. So, <clears throat> so that, that uh from the back of the ambulance. So I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rough day. Sorry, guys. But happy for him. It's, it's us that still got to go through the suffering. He's, got, he's better off than all of us are. Amen. Amen. Until one day. <clears throat> Sorry guys. <clears throat> Everywhere 
And it's, it's, uh, it's as if, okay, trust me. And I love it when he changes plans. And it's, it's, uh, it's as if, okay, trust me. Trust me. I know you've been studying all this, and, and you know, we should study God's Word. But uh, when he changes gears, we just need to hold on, right? And trust God. So, okay, God, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go, I'm going to trust you, just tell me. Just lead and God direct. So in John chapter 11, should be a familiar passage to a lot of us. It's a story about Lazarus. Not Lazarus and the, and the rich man, but the, be the beggar. But uh, Lazarus, the friend of Jesus. So everybody's there. Chapter 11 is going to be there. All right, the rest of y'all, you have to read it when you get home. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorry. <clears throat> says, verse 1, says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was, verse 2, that Mary, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So Mary and Martha, their brother was Lazarus. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. And uh, what's interesting is the, if you want to dig into Scripture and look at something cool, so look and see who else Mary and Martha is related to. Because the Bible gives us another clue about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are related to one of the, one of the disciples, one of the apostles. And not the blue one, not a good one, Judas. And it says that, that, that Mary herself is related to Judas. Well, that's an interesting thing. So look that one up, see what you come up with. There's a lot of people who are related in Scripture, you know, James and John, and, you know, so anyway. So verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now this is one of those verses that we, we all can stand on, because how many know that you're loved with the Lord? Yeah. How, how many know that when, when you're sick and somebody's praying unto God, they can pray, that very verse right there says, Lord, whom thou lovest is sick. Somebody you love is sick. And Jesus perks up, you know. <clears throat> Jesus, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, verse 4, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now that is a curious, curious verse. He says, this sickness is not up to death. Is Lazarus going to die? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Lazarus is going to die. Is he going to stay that way? No. Absolutely not. He's not going to stay that way. But he said, this sickness is not unto death. But why is the purpose for this sickness? This is a curious thing. This thing, that part right there, has a lot of people on their heels and say, so well, that, my God wouldn't do that. Well, then your God is not the God of the Bible, because the Bible says God does do that. Right? This is a friend of Jesus, one beloved by Jesus, and, and Jesus himself says that this sickness that he has is for the glory of God. Well, how does that work out? How does that work out? Well, we've got to read the rest of the story to figure out exactly how that works out. And we see, uh, we see that same thing portrayed three times that I know of in Scripture. There probably could be more, like uh, the, the, blind, blind, uh, the blind man begging. They said, why, who has sinned, this, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, how can a baby sin to make himself blind? I don't know. But he said, how, who sinned? That's what they asked him. Who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. And Jesus replies, said he was, he was born this way for the glory of God. And he's blind since birth. So you think about that affliction that this guy has all the way up until Jesus kills him was for the glory of God. Because now we get to read about it. We get to see about it. We just go, wow, that's, a, that's something that's very hard to comprehend. 
very hard to comprehend. And it's something that I personally had to work through. So, God, that doesn't make sense to me. But, uh, to be quite honest, I, I had, uh, well, we talked about, a few weeks ago, we talked about idolatry, creating a, a God that you're comfortable with and not necessarily God of Scripture. A God that He does things that you want Him to do and not necessarily biblical. You know, he's okay with this and not okay with that because you're okay with this and not okay with that. So we uh, we all are guilty of idolatry in that fashion. Until we learn differently, that's when we, we shape God according to the Bible. And not, not according to religion, not according to, you know, what Aunt, Aunt Susie or Grandma so-and-so said, but you, we form what we know and think about God according to God's word and not by the opinions of others. Off my soapbox for that one. Okay, so anyway, so the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So Jesus is going to get glory from Lazarus' sickness. In verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and we had heard, therefore, that he was sick. He abode two days in the same place where he was. Jesus, your friend is sick. Yep. I'm just going to hang out here for a couple of days, guys. You know. But Jesus, your friend is sick. No, I don't. It doesn't say what Jesus did during that time. It doesn't say that he went up to pray on a mountain or he went up to the wilderness or that he was teaching some great lesson that he had to get through. But we know that he waited to answer this prayer. He waited before he moved. He waited. So why did he wait? We can pontificate and we can think and we can complain, but I, I know the number one reason why he waited was for the glory of God. Number one reason why he waited so he abode two days still in the same place where he was in verse 7. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. And here's where it gets funky. So he said, let us go to Judea again. His disciples say unto them, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and go south thither again. All right, you, Jesus, you realize they tried to stone you, you when you were there last time. Um, common sense says, don't go where they're trying to stone you, right? Uh, people talk about, you know, when we, when we go and minister in New Mexico, you, you, we're cautious, not fearful, but cautious. And you don't go standing, you know, where they're doing a shooting or something. You don't go and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't make the bad guys mad, okay? So, so uh, and, and you may think, what does, the, what does the Bible say about your enemies? Not that any of those are our enemies. It says, if your enemy thirsts, give him drink. If your enemy's hungry, give him food. So something that we do quite often. We see somebody that works for the bad guys, and they're pretty obvious, they're everywhere. We stop and give them a bag of food. We stop and give them a, a bottle of water. And uh, no, there, there may be a little, uh, so if we help them, then, you know, they'll help us. There may be a little of that in there, you know, scratch your back, you'll scratch my kind of thing. But still, it's, it's loving your enemies, loving your neighbors. It's, that's, that's a person with a soul, right? And in the love of Jesus, I'm going to love on that person. Whether I like them, whether I agree with them, doesn't matter. So in this, Jesus is taking a bold step, going right back into the lion's den. We didn't see Daniel do that when he got out of the lion's den and God closed the lion, the mouth of the lions. We didn't see, hey, well, I got out. I'm going to go back in and stay for a while. No, he, he got out. It doesn't say he ever got, went back in either. But Jesus is going right back in to Judea. In verse 9, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he seeth the light of the world. 
But if any man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. All right, Jesus, thanks for the riddle. What's that mean exactly? Are there not 12 hours in a day? Well, depending on what time of year it is, you know, and everything else. But is there not 12 hours a day? If any man walks in a day, he stumbles God because he sees the light of the world. And we walk in the light of Christ, and we should not be stumbling around in darkness. Uh, for, for those of us that are saved and we know Christ, and we know, we realize who we were without Christ. Like a blind man stumbling along. Just going through the motions, stumbling over every little thing. But now that Jesus has illuminated our, our mind, we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. We have the Word of God. We see things a lot differently. And something about that, you just don't stumble like you used to. So verse 11. These things said he after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awaken him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Well, when you go to the doctor, what, what do they say? I'm going to lose this thing. <clears throat> what do he say to go to the doctor? Drink plenty of liquids and rest, right? They say, well, if Lazarus is sleeping, he's doing good because he was sick. You know, that's what you should do is, is sleep. Or take some rest when you're sleeping. The verse 13 makes it very clear. How did Jesus speak of his death? But they thought he, he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. D-E-A-D, -E -D, dead. My friend, he is dead. I, I, I told you he's sleeping, but you didn't understand what I was talking about. Lazarus is dead. He is stopped breathing. His heart's no longer pumping. And what Jesus says is true, right? Can Jesus lie? No. Nope. There are some absolute absolutes found in Scripture, and one of them is God cannot lie. Everything that God speaks, says, and does is the absolute truth. Jesus, when we're going to read it, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what, what's another, at the same verse, gives another absolute. Jesus' way, the truth, and the life. And then no man comes to the Father but by him. Right? So the only way to get into heaven is what? What's his name? Jesus. Oh, you're in church, you say it loud, right? One more time. Jesus. Yes, the only way to get to heaven. That, that, makes, that makes Christianity fundamentally different than anything else. Right? It's only one way. The Bible makes it clear there is only one way, and that is through the door of Jesus Christ. Right? That, that makes us different than Buddhism. I'm shutting this off. I'm just going to get loud. Sorry, guys. That makes us different than Buddhism. That makes us different than Islam. That makes us different than Judaism. That makes us different than Hindu and everything else. Because we say there is only one way, and Jesus is that way. If you not, do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be saved, then you're not saved. It's the wrath of God is what you have to look forward to. So that's why we have to be, be about the business of sharing who Jesus is. So verse 15 says, And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. He said, I'm glad that I wasn't there. Why? Because your believer's broken. You're lacking something. I'm glad I wasn't there. He te Jesus tells his disciples, those that are walking with him, listening to him, talking with him, said, I'm glad I wasn't there for your sakes. And for our sakes. We get to read about this great, amazing miracle, this act of faith. We get to read about this in God's word because they needed help. And guess what? Who needs help too? Every, every single one of us. He says again, I, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let's go unto him. Then verse 16. Now what, what, 
What do we know about Thomas? Why do we call him? Doubting. Doubting Thomas. Poor guy gets stuck with this, has one issue, one problem, and forever is known for being Doubting Thomas, right? It's like the, the woman's caught in the act of adultery. She got forgiven. She went away, but yet we still call her the woman caught in the act of adultery. Thomas, a disciple, cast out devils, healed the sick, had an amazing ministry after Acts. You know, you researched who, who Thomas was, and yet we still call him doubting Thomas. Poor guy. How, how many of y'all know that, that people are like that? Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all ever do anything like in school and, and you got a nickname that stuck? Yeah, yeah, I did too. I'm not even going to tell y'all some of the nicknames I had. It weren't pretty at all. It wasn't pretty at all. So in verse 16, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, the twin, unto his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. Does that sound like a doubting Thomas to you? Thomas says, let us go so we can die with him. He's going to go die? Come on, let's go, guys. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Thomas was ready. In verse 17, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Four days in the grave. You know what they did not have? Embalming, right? That, that unheard of, and even today Jews do not get involved. That's why they usually they have a, an immediate funeral. If you didn't make it, you didn't make it. That's that's the only way it is, because they don't believe in embalming the dead, because the the life is in the blood is how they believe. And there's other religions that do, they do the same thing. But anyway, no embalming. How many y'all? Uh, some of y'all have worked in certain fields where you would have been around uh, bodies. That have been out for a while. Yeah. 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 It ain't pleasant, is it? Not, not at all. The body does things. It is not pleasant at all. So, so he says, he's laid in the grave four days already. Now, verse 18. Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. That is a mile and a half. Bethany is a mile and a half outside of Jerusalem. That's a, it's a suburb. It's really a suburb now. It's like in Jerusalem. You, you feel like you don't even leave the city. In verse 19, many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. You know, you know the Bible talks about they have uh, paid mourners. You hire people people to mourn with you. You know, so they're, those people are there. And then there's other people that come to Mary and Martha to give them comfort. So uh, verse 20, then Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. They weren't at the graveside. They were in the house. As soon as Mary, who, who was the one that anointed his feet? Mary. Who, who was the one that's, that uh, got a little chastised by Jesus for being too busy about other things? Martha. Martha, Martha, you're too busy about, you know, you're, you're, and Mary had chosen the right thing to be at the feet of Jesus. It says, let the dishes wait, Martha. You come sit next to Mary, so to speak, right? So Mary, they, she hears Jesus is coming, yeah, deadheads. I hear my Savior. I hear my Lord, my King, my Savior. I'm going to go meet him. So she does. <clears throat> Verse 21, then Martha, yeah, Martha, as soon as she heard, I've got that backwards, said that backwards, didn't I? Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Forgive me, I said that backwards, didn't I? Then verse 21, then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. The Messiah of all the world is standing before you, and you choose to chastise him. Wow. Jesus has the power to say, adios, erased, gone. Yeah, I created you, and I'm going to uncreate you just like this, and we're done. 
and she chooses to chastise him. She's mourning. You know, sometimes mourning people do crazy things. And I would say that's one of those. They said, if you had been here, my brother had not died. Did she have faith in Jesus? Had she likely seen miracles? Heard about the amazing things Jesus had done? She probably, I would say, maybe didn't hear about Jesus raising, like, Jairus' daughter. Jesus wasn't there. But the very hour Jesus knew about it, prayed about it, she was healed. And there's several other things where Jesus healed from afar. You know? Because Jesus can do that. It's Jesus. But Martha said, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. In verse 22. But I know, she says, I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. That's great. You would think, you would think Martha's going to... Let's go to the grave. I want to check this out. I want to see him. She says, but no. She says, Martha said unto him, verse 24, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Martha, she knows scripture apparently. She said, I, I know he'll raise again in the resurrection on the last day. And we, I mean, I've got several places where that's found in scripture. In verse 25, Jesus responded, said unto her, Wonderful verse. <coughs> Jesus calling. <laughs> verse 25, Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. That's an absolute of God. You know, in the Bible, there's, there's a lot of absolutes. And it says, Jesus is that way to eternal life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. Now, I, I believe and I'm, I am 100% sure in the Bible, so when you draw your last breath here, the next thing you will know, and the next breath you take, will be in eternity. And hopefully it's on the right side of eternity. And hopefully you, you draw your next breath and, and you gasp because the beauty that is Almighty God is before your face. And everything you see and know is just so surreal. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And in verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Jesus said, if you're a believer and trusting in Jesus Christ, you will never die. Now, wait a second, Jesus. What do you mean we'll never die? What's that old song? Where the soul never dies. Right? Our soul is eternal. Where it spends eternity, that's, that's up to us if we're trusting in Jesus or not. So it doesn't die. It just choose, changes their address, right? You just change your address when you, when you take your last breath here. It says, who, believes in, who lives and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. Verse 27, she replies, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come, should come into the world. She knows this for a fact. So Jesus lays it out, says, if you live, if you believe in me, you'll never die. And then she says, I believe. What does she believe? The same thing that we need to believe. I believe that thou art the, the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So you're the Messiah. I know it for, for a fact. And in verse 28, and when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master has come and calls for me. Verse 29. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. 
And Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. So Jesus stayed put after he met Martha. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goes to the grave to weep there. So they didn't hear the secret Martha said, hey Mary, Jesus is here. They thought she was going to the grave to mourn. Verse 32, when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, the same thing his sister said, her sister said, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. He groaned in his spirit and was troubled. Jesus. What does it sound like when God groans? I don't want to know. Apparently John knew. He wrote it down. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, I think. I think I probably make uh, make God do a, a face plant every once in a while. Boy, boy, boy. My grandpa used to say that. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> Any y'all know that you do that to God? He makes him shake his head. So what are they doing now? So Jesus groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, "Where have you laid him?" They said unto him, "Lord, come and see." Verse 35, shortest verse in the short, shortest verse in the Bible is what? Jesus wept. John 1135. Jesus wept. Show him where he is. He's already grown in the spirit, very troubled, and it says, Jesus wept. Now we can pontificate and we can argue and discuss everything about why he was weeping. Some say he's weeping because of their lack of faith. People that are with him, people that know him, knows that he was raised the dead eight times in Scripture. No, I'm trying to take that back. Three times in Scripture, Jesus raised the dead. This is one of them. There's the woman, the uh, the widow of Nain. Anyway, three times in Scripture. So Jesus wept. That is a fact. When God cries, does it rain? I don't know. That's what I got told when I was a kid. But Jesus is weeping. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? So they're questioning Jesus and his authority and his power. In verse 38, Jesus therefore again groaned in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. So they said, Hey, couldn't Jesus... Hey, this man that heals the sick, causes his blind eyes to see, couldn't have he have saved his friend if he loved him so much? What did it say at the beginning? All this has happened for the glory of God. All this has happened. So he groaned in himself, comes to the grave. Verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Been four days, remember? By this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. Verse 40, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if, if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Martha, why are you requesting me? Do I said. How many of us question God? A miracle is right getting ready to happen. And there's a but, uh, but God. We do that, don't we? You would be right on the verge of seeing something. God do something amazing. And we sit back in our own heads and question God. We do the same thing. But he said, if you would believe, you should see the glory of God. Why was Lazarus sick? He said, for the glory of God. Now we're going to get the answer. Verse 41, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes 
and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus praying? Jesus, when talking to the Father, never had to say, I'm sorry. Never had to say, forgive me. Never had to say, I won't do it again. Never had to pray for, you know, for his day that was just a mess and a wreck. Never had to say, God, I need you. Because he had him. Never sinned. Never had to apologize for sin. He said, Father, I know that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. This whole thing is to help their unbelief. Verse 43, when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Can you imagine what it would be like? For God to speak in a loud voice? I, 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 I picture it was kind of like creation. When God said, let there be light. Boom, oh, there's light. I think the, the, the powerful word of God is, is powerful by itself, but for God to speak in a loud voice, things happen. Things happen. He spoke in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, come forth, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Same way Jesus was wrapped up. Lazarus was wrapped up. Bound with a napkin, Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some went to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. And what did it do? It enraged them. They didn't take joy and said, Oh, praise God, somebody's raised from the dead. It enraged them. And then the next time you see Lazarus, he's with Jesus in Martha's house. And they're trying to kill Jesus and trying to kill Lazarus. Why are they trying to kill Lazarus? Imagine the things that he had to say. Imagine. I said, I said, he just said, I heard his voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And I, I was having a hard time because I was kind of wrapped up, but, you know. And I saw a light. Somebody had already rolled the stone away. And, and I saw this light. And I just went towards the light. And then they started. And there was a smell. <laughs> Did my sister still smell? I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Like Thomas, I doubt it. But the power of God, through the word of God, caused Lazarus to walk out of the grave. By the word of God, Lazarus come forth. And I look at this in the same way I think about my life and about some of y'all's life. The first time you heard the voice of God calling you to come out because we were in a dead place. We were in a nasty place, an ugly place, and a stinky place. And you hear God drawing you and pulling you out of a nasty place that you're in to not just a to have a little bit of life and a little bit of life, but to walk in the life and the light of Jesus Christ. To have a testimony. Well, I, I didn't have to die to have new birth. Physically. God gave me that new birth. He says, uh, Paul says that I, I put my flesh to death daily. I mortify my flesh daily. Because our flesh wants to take over, right? So we, we can see this example of the power of God for the glory of God. Just amazing. What God done to someone he loved. You know, God doesn't love Lazarus more than he loves you. You know, Jesus died. It doesn't say, you know what it doesn't say in Scripture how long Lazarus lived? After he was resurrected? Doesn't say. 
It doesn't say that the Pharisees finally caught up to him and took him out. It doesn't say. We have no history of what happened to this guy. How long did he live? Did he get to be 100 or so? But we do know what we know. And the fact is that Jesus resurrected him for his glory, for his praise, for our knowledge to help those that are there to believe and help us to believe. So believe. God's word be true and every man a liar. It says that in the Bible. We trust and know who Jesus is. He, if he has the power to raise some, someone from the dead, he has the power to heal. He has the power to forgive sins, remove burden, take away guilt, remove shame, regret. And then he died for you. Greater love had no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for us that we may know him, trust him, believe in him, walk according to him, obey him, seek him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love him in return that love that he gives us. Let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We are thankful, Father God, for the honor it is to share your word today. We're thankful that uh, you saw fit to record and to keep the story about Lazarus in Scripture, an amazing testimony of what you do in amazing ways, healing the sick, raising the dead, bringing life where there was death. And I thank you, Father God, that uh, your word does not return void. It will go and it will do that which is set out to do. And I thank you, Father God, for the new life that you've given us, the opportunity to love you. As your scripture says, that uh, we must be born again. And I thank you, Father God, for that opportunity to be born again and walk in that new life. Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you, Father God, for bringing comfort to those who mourn, as your word says, giving us strength to go through and do what you called us to do day by day, to worship you in the middle of the storms, in the middle of the trials of life. We worship you and choose that this is the day you've made and rejoice. We love you so much, Lord, to be with each and every one of us. Lord, we continue to be with Mel's family as they continue to mourn and his friends. Continue to be, with, Lord, with those that are sick. We pray, Lord, that you supernaturally, amazingly, profoundly heal their bodies in a way that only you get the glory and the praise. And we thank you. And I saw this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.